Silakaya, Chaksu Ummilikam Yena Tas, my Shri Guru Vena Maha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutalai, Swayam Mupakidam Mayam Dadati Swam Dadati Kam, Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutalai, Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani, Namaste Saraswati Devi. Gauravani Pachari Nene Rishesa Sunyavari Pasya Yere Satarine Panchakalpa Turu Bishakri Pasindu Ve Vichapatitam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namahona Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadavar Shivasari Gaur Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Okay. So be, before we begin our today's lesson, which is a continuation of this wonderful pastime between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Kazi and the discourse on different philosophical and religious matters, centering around cow killing and the importance of uh, Harinam Sankirtan and uh, the different uh, opinions and uh, experiences that are coming from those people who are involved in this particular pastime, specifically the Kazi and many of his men and the, Hindu, the Brahmins, the smart the Brahmins, the Hindus, the Muslim groups that are complaining. So it's a quite a dynamic uh, discussion. But before we do that, I'm gonna make a quick announcement on a completely different subject which I'll also again repeat at the end of our session. And that is um, the Minister of Health in uh, ISKCON, His Holiness Prahladananda Maharaj, has put together uh, a video. He's the Minister of Health and Welfare on the, um, today's COVID situation, which includes a lot of principles about what is going on, along with some medical reports and other interesting things. Um, the video has been uh, uh, put on uh, YouTube. And so I was watching it just prior to coming on today. So um, I'll send it on the conference. And uh, if you want to watch it, you can. I'm not saying you have to, but I think it's very informative because it's nice to know what's actually going on right now. I think this will clarify a lot of uh, the confusion that is floating around in the air about what is really happening. You can judge for yourself based on watching this video and see what you think. Um, if you're afraid to watch it, I, I don't think we should be because there's nothing in there that is scary at all. It's simply factual presentations of information and quotes from Srila Prabhupada and others. So uh, I'll put it on the conference uh, afterwards, but um, and then you can choose to watch it. Okay, so we'll begin our lesson, and this is from 217, chapter 17 to 15 of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and his youth. Hindura Ishvara Bharaye Narayanaya Setu Mahoehena Loya Moya Mana. I know that Narayan is the supreme god of the Hindus. And I think that you are the same Narayan. I feel this within my mind. Because he's getting a little indication who he's talking to. <laughs> First, he just thought he was a very charismatic uh, Hindu who was leading others in this march. And now he's getting an indication that this person who he's speaking to is much more than that. A hey, Sumi Mahaprabhu, Hasiya, Hasiya. Kahite lagila kinchu karjire chuniya. After hearing the Kasi speak so nicely, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu touched him and smiling spoke as follows 
Tomara Mukha Krishna Nama E Bada Vichitra Papa Shaya Gela Hoila Parama Paditra. The chanting of the holy name of Krishna from your mouth has performed a wonder. It has nullified the reaction of all your sinful activities. Now you have become completely, become supremely pure. Now the Lord's responding in the position of one who knows everything completely. So obviously, he's speaking from the supreme authoritative position, the Lord himself. Purport. Confirming the potency of the Sankirtan movement, these words from the very mouth of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu express how people can be purified simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. Because he was a Muslim Malaysia mediator, but because several times he uttered the holy name of Krishna, automatically the reactions of his sinful life was vanquished and he was fully purified of all material contamination. We do not know why the atheists of the present day protest that we are deteriorating the Hindu religion by spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world and claiming all classes of men to the highest standard of Vaishnavism. These rascals disagree with us so vehemently that some of them do not allow European and American Vaishnavas to enter the temples of Vishnu. Thinking religion to be meant for material benefit, these so-called Hindus have actually become vicious by worshiping the numerous forms of the demigods. In the next verse, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirms Kazi's purification. So here, again, we see where the op opposition comes, right, apparently in your own backyard, Hindus. And what are, what are they saying? They're saying that because they're accustomed to worshiping the Lord for material benefits, they're averse to anything else. And therefore they think that this kind of worship by chanting mantras to glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead is simply con a concoction that someone has come up with in order to make followers and become popular. But actually, it is the Lord himself who has authorized this movement, and he's not doing it. He's, doing, he's only doing it so the, the people of the world can ultimately come to the stage of loving devotional service to the Lord. So we have what is called materialistic religionists. They are considered on the lowest platform. They don't know who is, who is a devotee and who is not a devotee. They do, they're very expert at performing rituals. They also like to do pujas, honor various types of ceremonies, and perform some charity giving. And therefore, they think that is sufficient. Therefore, I am a religious person. But what is their motivation? To gain material prosperity, to gain material positions. So using religion or religious uh, activities, which are sub-religious, not sub-religious, but they are parallel to the highest, not parallel, I'm sorry. They are lesser than the highest principle of bhakti, which is to glorify the Lord. They use these things simply to increase their material position, that's all. So you'll see, you'll find even we, when we were discussing, discussing the life of Ramanujacharya, who, who was the person that was most envious against him was a person who was formerly one of his followers and later turned against him and plotted against him to try to kill him. So you see uh, people who sometimes come and for whatever reason don't stay or because their motivations are different and they don't give up these motivations once they actually learn what is the, the purpose of devotional life, they, uh, they become offensive because they feel threatened by, by pure religious principles. And that's the point. They feel threatened by something that is actually pure. <laughs> Okay, so this is that verse. So we'll, 
we'll go on and finish these last few verses. And then we'll end at verse number 226. Hari Krishna Narayana Taliti Nanama Bada Bhagyavana Tumi Bada Puryavan. Because you have chanted three holy names of the Lord, Hari Krishna and Narayana, you are undoubtedly the most fortunate and pious. Hmm. Well, the Lord is giving him some credit, explaining just by saying these names, you have become fortunate, and because you are not envious, you're simply doing it, repeating it nicely, and you have become pious. Here, the Supreme Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirms that anyone who chants the holy names of Hari, Krishna, and Narayan without offense is certainly extremely fortunate. And whether Indian or not Indian, Hindu or non-Hindu, he immediately becomes comes to the level of the most pious personality. We therefore do not care about the statement of the atheists who protest against our movement making the members of other cities or countries into Vaishnavas. We have to follow in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya, executing our mission peacefully, or if necessary, kicking the heads of such protesters. <laughs> yeah, the caravan uh, rolls on, then the dogs will bark. The dogs will bark, the caravan rolls on. Don't keep switching the verses until I'm ready for the next one. Okay, yeah. Um, in this particular point here, it's being made that the glories and the efficacy of simply repeating the names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead without, without offense or without pretense uh, without motivation, material motivation. So this is what we're really uh, trying to appreciate here, how powerful it is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Even if one is chanting with offense, still, if one continues to chant with offense and continues their chanting gradually, they will become free from those offenses and come to the stage of Nama Bas offenseless chanting and then they'll start to taste some of the small of the great amount of sweetness that is very very that is there within the holy name so um, uh, sometimes devotees also become influenced by opposition and why i've seen that many times devotees feel embarrassed to actually present themselves as who they are. They feel that they are, you know, if you look like and speak like and you act like everyone else, then you feel like, well, there's no problem. But if you go outside of the norm, then you might feel, well, you know, I might be criticized, I might be marginalized, I might be neglected, I might be, you know, uh, uh, what is it? What's the word? I might be uh, um, you know I might uh, people might act against me. So but devotees have nothing to to fear because simply by representing Lord Chaitanya and the Sankirtan movement one becomes glorious in the eyes of the Lord and and glorious in the eyes of people who actually have some sukriti or some intelligence, some piety. Okay. So the body should never be uh, embarrassed about who we are. And many times, you know, you know, we should we should not think, well, I if I'm going outside, I can't wear a dhoti because if I wear a dhoti, then people will think different of me. No. There was that one story where, and this is a true story, it actually happened, where in India, this was way back, many years, uh, maybe many, many decades ago, there was one factory that had many of the workers who were Hindu workers. And many of the Hindus were wearing tilak, gopichandan, on their forehead. 
So the factory was sold and it was purchased by a Muslim person. After taking over the factory, he made a declaration that now no one can come to work with T-lock on. And if you do, you will lose your job. So everyone was fearful and they took their T-lock off, except one man. I was thinking, well, this is my religion. Why should, why can I be, you know, why can I act according to the principles of my religion, which says that if I'm a Vaishnav, I should always be with T-lock. One of our devotees in the movement, really a wonderful devotee, her name was Jamuna, the Jamuna, very dear to Prabhupada. She would always say, oh, if I don't have my tea like on, I feel like I'm not even dressed properly. <laughs> so yeah, a devotee feels like that without tea like, oh my God, I'm not even dressed. And so a devotee should not fear going out in public with tea lock or with, with um, you know, religious dress, either dhotis or saris or anything, because you know, we are who we are, and we are we are fortunate and proud to be devotees of Krishna. Not that we think that the material society is the norm and we are the abnorm. Actually, it's the other way around. And so in this factory, there was that one man who kept wearing his tea lock. And then one day, the proprietor came to him and said, you know, I... I uh, made the rule that uh, no one can come to work with T-Lock, so you're coming. He said, yes, this is my religion and I'm proud of it. I'm going to wear it. He spoke with such surety, conviction, and respect that the uh, Muslim uh, factory owner said, all right, everyone here who doesn't wear should continue not to wear, but this person he can wear. <laughs> so he was impressed by the fact that this person actually stood up for what he believed in. And uh, so that's uh, to compromise uh, truth for material principles means you lose everything. <laughs> One should not compromise what is right in order to patronize something that is fashionable or modern. <laughs> okay, so again, chanting of the holy names is the, uh, and Prabhupada gets a little strong at the end. He says, you know, our, we execute our mission peacefully, but if we get too much opposition, then we have to, you know, fight that opposition accordingly because this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. It is not simply some religious movement that somebody created in time and it will go in and will lose its uh, focus in time. No, Krishna consciousness will only increase as long as the devotees stay serious. Okay, next verse. After the Kasi heard this, tears flowed down from his eyes. He immediately touched the lotus feet of the Lord and spoke the following sweet words. So the Kasi is actually moved. The Lord was giving him a lot of credit just because he would became favorable to the Sankirtan movement. Next verse. Tomara prasare mori guchila kumati e kripakaryena tomate rahu bhakti. Only by your mercy have my bad intentions vanished. Kindly favor me so that my devotion may always be fixed upon you. Because he's revealing now that he understands that same person who he worships in the Quran is standing right in front of him. <laughs> and he's happy to be 
shown the right way. This is an intelligence. When a person is wrong and they admit they're wrong and they're willing to accept what's right, that is an intelligent and respectable person. People think, well, if I make a mistake, I have to hide behind my mistake by saying another mistake to defend. But that is not at all the quality of even simple morality. One, one who admits their mistake and asks for forgiveness and is willing to accept the right way is glorious. One who lies, cheats, or somehow or other tries to twist things around to make himself not look as bad as he is, becomes even worse. Their activities are worse than their wrong thinking. Okay, so next verse. Prabhu Kahe Ekadana Magie Tomaya Sankirtana Vadayache Nahi Kadiyaya. The Lord said, I wish to beg you for one favor and charity. You must pledge that this Sankirtan movement will not be checked, at least in the district of Nadia. So the Lord is asking a favor. Okay, next verse. Kajikahi Mora Bamse Yata Upajiba Tahike Talaka Diba Kirtanana Vadibe. Kazi said, To as many descendants as take birth in my dynasty in the future, I shall give this grave admonition. No one should check the Sankirtan movement. And that is the fact, even today, in that area, all the relatives that have come in the line of the Kasi respect the Sankirtan movement. Purport. As a result of this grave injunction by the Kasi, even at present, the descendants of the Kasi's family do not oppose the Sankirtan movement under any circumstances. Even during the great Hindu Muslim riots in neighboring places, the descendants of the Kadasi honestly preserve the assurance given by their forefather. Which verse was that? 222. Okay, next verse. We see here Prabhupada confirms what is happening. Um, I need to leave for about five seconds and I'll be right back. Suni Prabhu Hari Bali Utiya Apani Utila Vaishnava Sabakari Hari Dwani. Hearing this, the Lord got up chanting, Hari, Hari. Following him, all the other Vaishnavas also got up chanting the vibration of the holy names of the Lord. So everyone is happy. The, the Kazi, before a very harsh ruler willing to persecute and harass people if they didn't follow him now has become very simple, humble, and a follower of the Lord in all respects. Next verse. <laughs> Kirtana karite prabhu kariya gamana sange chale asikaji ulasita mana 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went back to perform kirtan and the Kasi, his mind jubilant, went with him. So you can see the Kasi is so happy. He can't give up the association of the Lord. So he's following him along. Okay. Next verse. We have two more verses and that concludes. Kajiye vidaya dila sachira nandana nachite nachite aila apana bhavana. The Lord asked the Kazi to go back home. Then the son of Sachi came back to his home dancing and dancing. Lord Chaitanya loves to dance. You, find, you don't find too many, in fact, you don't find hardly any time Lord Chaitanya is leading kirtans. He's always responding to the kirtan by dancing in great happiness and ecstasy. Okay, next verse. And this is the last verse. E matta kajire prabhu kariya prasada ihaye sunatara kande aparada. This is the incident concerning the Kasi and the Lord's mercy on him. Anyone who hears this is also freed from all offenses. And that means the tendency to commit offense too and the reactions of one's offenses. So this is a very powerful narration of one of the most important pastimes performed by the Lord in showing the efficacy of the Sankirtan movement and the glories of chanting and dancing to the sound of Krishna's holy name. And of course, the uh, importance of understanding the glories of cow worship, worshiping the cow, protecting the cow. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any questions related to this pastime in any form. You can go back as far as you want and see if there's any questions. Or if there's no questions or comments, you may ask something. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this wonderful uh, glory of like holy name and the conviction of like we should be very confident of like our this tradition, this culture. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah. We should not be intimidated by being in a foreign culture and think that if I don't follow my culture, uh, which is a spiritual culture, Vedic culture, a spiritual culture, then, you know, people will think, well, I don't like this culture I'm in or I'm against it or I won't get the benefits of it. Uh, this, this type of thinking is contrary to one's progress in, the, in, in life. Culture is the basis of the, the living entity's values. Values are based on culture, and spiritual culture has all, uh, all the values that one needs to develop for happiness in this world and make progress to go back on back to God. Then. So um, spiritual culture is real culture, or it's lasting culture. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Like really, really like important lesson for everybody. And uh, uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotee, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. Uh, or if you would like to uh, type in the chat window, then I can read on your behalf. Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for again reminding of us of this wonderful movement that we belong to and how important it is to uphold all the principles nicely. Uh, I was struck by 
the point you mentioned that about admitting mistakes, how we must uh, be quick actually to admit that we have made a mistake and make rectification. But generally we have the opposite tendency. We have pride or false ego. We want to justify, we want to defend, we want to cover up. We don't like to admit our mistakes. We don't like to make apologies. We don't like to uh, be corrected. So how can we rectify this bad tendency which harms us on so many levels? Well, if you know what's right, then you do it. Even if it's difficult. <laughs> The fact is, if you know what's right, then the false ego will tell you something else. So you should know, recognize that that's simply the false ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is a very simple thing. When you know what's right, you do it. But if you know what's right and you feel you can't do it or if you're not, not, not able to do it, that's a principle, it's called uh, Riddhaya Dulabhya. It's called weakness of heart. I know it's right, but I can't do it. We had the example of um, Dhritarashtra and the Shastras. Dhritarashtra knew his sons were wrong, but still he supported them. He knew Krishna was on the other side. Still, he went against Krishna because of his attachment to his sons. Because of his attachment to his sons, especially Dharanya and Dushashana, he became so blinded that even knowing what is right, he refused to accept it. And so you'll see that sometimes. We do, we do we make these little mistakes, maybe on a smaller, we're sitting there and we're sitting in front of a big piece of cake. So we could taste a little bit of the cake and then get a, get a flavor and then be fine. But because the senses say, oh, no, no, you got to eat more and more and more and more and more. So you just keep eating more. And you know, if you do that, there's going to be something adverse later on. You're going to have some stomach difficulty. Have sense, you're going to have difficulty controlling the senses. You know, in other words, knowing something will not be good later, still attachment to what is going on now kind of blots out or makes one think in a different way or the wrong way. So, um, yeah, to do the right thing, and when you know it's right, is actually the value of a, the, 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 living, the living being's existence. Haridas Thakur was being threatened to stop chanting. And if he, was, if he stopped chanting, then there would be no reaction to him. <laughs> but he knew that this is this is beneficial for me and for everyone else and this is my life so even at the ex even at the threat of being killed he lived up to his values mm -hmm. so yeah we're faced with that occasionally, not every day, but when we see, well, yeah, this is right. And then I know if I do it, maybe some people will criticize me or something will go wrong. Still, because I know it's right, you know, I have to live according to principle and not according to convenience. Mm -hmm. The child, if you give him something to play with, he has no problems. But if you tell him that he has to study, he won't do it. He wants to play. Because he gets immediate gratification from playing, but study doesn't bring that. Uh, Guru Maharaj, is the, are these things 
uh, ingrained in childhood as we watch people who are like that because if we don't have good role models or rather if we have people who fudge and obfuscate and cheat and lie and do things like that we think that's normal and that's the way to be well so what are you saying that what we should, saying we should saying go saying along with that we should no, you're no. Saying what i'm saying is we need to see people who are stalwart who are upright who are noble who are saintly who are doing the right thing even if it's very difficult to do so that we can take courage from their example and learn from that that's all i'm saying yeah that's the idea but we have to learn because if you don't learn you'll find yourself always in a marginal situation making the wrong decisions and not be able to to progress in life uh, yes guru maharaj thank you very much for clarifying that yeah if you listen to shila prabhupad he tells it like it is you know he doesn't pander or patronize anyone but he does it with compassion that's the point anyone else <laughs> hari krishna maharaj um, please accept my sympathy to all glories to the prophet all glories to maharaj thank you so much um today's lecture was just um, reinforcing those vaishnava values so much and the principles as well um as shri devi mata ji was saying that we need somebody as example i just wanted to say that my husband has always been an example for me to do all to follow all the vaishnava etiquette and i have seen that change in my own self that when you see somebody following in front of you standing up for your values then um it does become very very easy to follow it you know you have the guidance kind of guidance how to follow it why to follow it where to follow it so yeah and but it is still even though my husband is a example for me and he has always led the way today's class was still very very reinforcing for me to wear the tilak and to follow all of our vaishnava etiquette and not shy away so thank you so much maharaj for reinforcing that i think i i just needed it in a very very uh, i i got it at a very appropriate time mm -hmm. um i have a question that you know um when you mentioned that we should be able to accept our mistakes now when we when we do a mistake there are many people to whom we might be answerable if we have done a very big mistake so do we go and accept it in front of everybody or do we accept it in front of people whom we are comfortable or we accept it to ourselves because sometimes what happens is that when i have committed a mistake and uh, against somebody i have done an offense or i have not done something right to somebody uh, anyways that person has a kind of you know not we don't go get along very well anyway so me going and accepting my mistake in front of that can flare up many more issues not necessary with all those issues i would have been wrong and then uh, it's a very difficult situation saying sorry for one thing and then just trying to cover up or not saying sorry for other things so whom whom are we liable to to accept the mistake whom are we liable to yes well <laughs> that's a to god <laughs> you can hide from people and you can hide from yourself but you can't hide from krishna <laughs> would that be um helpful in breaking our ego maharaj just accepting in front of the deity yeah because 
we we pride ourselves in doing the right thing, and then when we don't do the right thing, we we might try to hide it or cover it up. But we have to admit it to ourselves first. So when we admit it to ourselves, we're, in one sense, we're admitting it to God also at the same time. Okay. That's a big relief. <laughs> yeah, God, God knows our, our uh, weaknesses, but he doesn't fault us for our weaknesses. But if we act in a proud way, trying to hide our weaknesses by some kind of uh, explanations, we look quite ridiculous, <laughs> even within ourselves. So practically speaking, whenever we are in a situation where we have to kind of accept it, so by implementing it practically, um, we are accepting it in front of Krishna, right? Like if I have done any mistake, I'm accepting it in front of the deities, but then I will be put into situations where I have to openly accept it, those topics will come up. So I have to not shy away at that time. And if I try to shy away in front of other people, and if I keep justifying myself, but I have accepted in front of Krishna, then that is also not right. Is that understanding correct? Mm, I'm not sure if I caught everything you said. If, if you have to justify it in front of Krishna, what was the last line you said? So, um, um, uh, if I have accepted my mistake in front of Krishna, you know, within myself also, I know that I have done something wrong. But when it comes to accept it in front of other people. If I still keep on justifying myself just to be saved from that um, shame, then that means that I'm still not accepting it in front of Krishna also honestly, right? I might have physically done it, but there is no, there is less honesty in it because I'm still trying yeah, to justify yeah. it. Now. Yeah, it's duplicity. It's, it's hypocrisy actually. If you submit it to yourself, but then again, if there's other people involved and you pre present yourself as being okay, you're not really admitting to yourself. You're just trying to, you know, present you. If there's no reason to admit anything, then don't do it. But if it will make a difference in the relationship, or if something is done wrong to hurt someone, then we should definitely say something. That's a wonderful point of clarification, Maharaj. That uh, if it's going to make a difference, then we should definitely admit it in front of other people as well. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to go around telling everybody all your problems and faults and mistakes. That's not the idea. But when you're involved with a situation where some some per other people are involved and you're at and you're you have done something wrong or said something wrong. To apologize is just normal and natural to meet your fault. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. That really helped and clarified it. Yeah, and you actually feel good when you do that. Yes, it does kind of take away that um, heaviness from the heart. I have experienced yeah. this thing. Sorry. Anything else? <laughs> no, I'm quite clear now on that topic. Thank you so much. Good, good, good. It's important. This is this is a very important principle. It's also a sign of humility, too.
हरे कृष्ण गुरु महाराज गुरु महाराज आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन व्हेन वी आर वर्शिपिंग चैतन्य महाप्रभु वी शुड वर्शिप हिम एज ए सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और अवर मूव शुड बी टू वर्शिप हिम एज ए लाइक डिवोटी ऑफ लॉर्ड इन वन ऑफ द लेक्चर इट वाज मेंशनड दैट सॉरी व्हेन यू व्हेन यू सी हिम ऑन द अल्टर एंड ही इज इन द पोजीशन ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सो यू ड्रेस हिम नाइसली you put a peacock feather in his hair and you do the worship even in your homes you worship him as the supreme lord okay now i i reason i asked this question guru maharaj because in one of the lecture one prabhu mentioned that Uh, when devotee is in the pure stage like devotee stage then they would like to see or like worship chaitanya mahaprabhu as a law, not lord but as a devotee like in that mood that's the like very high ecstasy state so i was a bit confused you should follow in the footsteps of the previous acharyas how they worship the lord and then we have a clear understanding they they see see the lord as the supreme personality of godhead not as the enjoyer who has come to enjoy this material world he's not the visayi he is the astraya he is the shelter Lord Chaitanya is going into ecstasy in his in his internal mood as the pure devotee of the Lord. We should know that this is exhibiting his uh, mood of Radharani's love for Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It's really helpful. Thank you, mm-hmm. Hare Krishna. Okay. We can stop here. Um I'll make the same announcement I did at the very beginning for those who came on later. Um the, the health and welfare minister of Iskon, his holiness Prahlad Anand Maharaj has produced a video in the form of a class which is interspersed with a lot of information about today's situation with the covid virus um things about the pcr tests and other points of information it's nicely presented there are some video clips within the class and there's a nice discussion also so it's on youtube and i will uh, i will uh, send you the link in the form of posting it on the conference right as soon as we close our today's session um you can listen to it and watch it if you want to if you don't want to that's up to you but there's nothing inflammatory or conspiratorial about it it's interesting it's just presenting facts uh, and cooperating those facts from many many authorities okay and i think you'll find it very very helpful in understanding what's going on today with this this um covid virus and it's coming from the health and welfare minister so uh it has and he's been doing this as a service and not simply uh, something extra <laughs> Okay so thank you very much and we'll stop here and we'll see you all again tomorrow is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj's appearance day so that'll be the topic of tomorrow's class the glorification of the pastimes and life of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati it is also the disappearance day of one of the greatest devotees in the history of Iskon that was Gorkishore I'm sorry Gorgovinda Maharaj who disappeared on uh March 9th 
1996 in Sridham Mayapur. I was personally there when he left the world. Um, and so there, um, so you, we also honor his disappearance day on that day. Of course, the devotees who are followers of Gaur, Govinda Maharaj, have been celebrating his disappearance day yesterday and today. Uh, for those of you who want to see the final session, which is tonight, uh, starting at, uh, at 6.30 uh, Indian time, which is about, um, I don't know, you have to make the calculations, 6.30 Indian time, what is in relationship to your time. Um, I'll send you that link also, and you can um, go on. And listen to the devotees. Radhanath Swami will be speaking tonight. Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj will be speaking tonight. And many, many other leaders about Gorgo Govinda Maharaj. So that's this evening in Indian time, and which will be a little different in your time. Okay, so... Um, I guess it's almost ready to start Indian time. It's already. Yeah, 30 um, minutes from now, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's another 30 minutes and it'll be on. Okay. So thank so, you very uh, much. Sorry. I'll send you both of those links, the one to the video with the health and welfare minister, uh, Praladananda Maharaj about the PCR tests and other related things on the COVID. Uh, con con the COVID controversy, you might say, and um, the um, link for this other program for Gorgo Winda Maharaj. But please try to come tomorrow for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's class. And uh, wherever you are, if you can celebrate it in the local temples, then that is the best. Okay. All Thank glories you. to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord, Panchakopa, to Gishya, Kripa Sindhu, Pavacha, Patitana, Pavane, Pavana, Vaishnava, Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for giving your valuable, valuable time. And thanks, devotee, also for joining this session. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gurudev ki jai, Anant Koti Vrishna Vrind ki jai. Thank you very much Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna.